Hello everyone, this is Dr. Mujahid again. Today we are going to discuss the anatomy of the skull. Over, just quick overview. Uh, the skull is composed of two parts as we can see here. This part here is called the vault of the skull or the cover of the skull. And this is a cranium or the brain box. Usually the vault, this one ossify in a membrane and this one ossify in a cartridge. Now if we start with this one, we can see this line. This is our fusion line, it's called sutures. So we have this suture, this is a famous one. This is the corona suture which join the frontal bone with the two parietal bones. Then the two parietal bones are joined here by the sagittal suture. And here we have the lambdoid suture, and this is the occipital bone. The point of meeting of the corona sutures and the sagittal suture is the uh, pregma. And here at this point is the lambda, which was used to be the fontanelle in babies. Inside, the most important thing is the impressions of the middle meningeal artery, as we can see because it's an important source of extradural hematoma. And this is the impression for the superior sagittal sinus. And here we have the impressions on nodes made by the arachnoid granulations. So these are the important things to remember in the vault. We can see that the bone here in the cut edge has an outer cortex and inner cortex, and in between them we have a cancellous bone, as we can see. If we take the brain box, we have an interior view, anterior view, lateral view, and this is an anterior one. This is a posterior view from behind, and we have the inferior view. Now, if we look here, we can see the orbit. These are the orbits, and this is a nasal area, nasal cavity. This, this is a nasal bone, and the, uh, this is a fusion line between the frontal bone here, this one, and the nasal bone. We have two nasal bones with internasal suture. This is a superciliary arch, area of thickening, contain the frontal air sinus. This is the orbital cavity. It is bounded by the frontal bone, superiorly zygomatic bone laterally the maxilla medially okay the maxilla and the zygomatic bone they meet in the inferior border okay if you take the walls we can see here this is a ismoid bone in the medial wall and behind it is a sphenoid bone containing the optic canal there this is the optic canal in the superior wall we can see this is a greater wing of the sphenoid bone in the lateral wall and just behind the zygomatic bone and it contains the uh, the severe orbital fissure. In the severe bone, we have the frontal bone, and behind it is the lesser wing of the sphenoid bone. In the floor, we have the maxilla. If you go behind, you can see the inferior orbital fissure. These are the important things that we can see in the orbit. This is the inferior orbital foramen. Here we can see the lacrimal foramen, which will lead you to the nasal acrimal duct. And here are the conchi, the inferior and the middle one. And this is a nasal septum made by the vomer and the perpendicular plate of the small bone. These are the uh, alveolar arch. This is alveolar arch, which is part of the maxillary bone. And these are the alveolar teeth. So this is regarding the anterior view of the skull. If we look laterally, we can see this is a zygomatic bone extending to meet the temporal bone. And they form the zygomatic arch. And this is the temporal fossa, which is a very important site for origin of temporalis muscle. And here below, we have the infratemporal fossa. This is the, um, the lateral pterygoid plate. And uh, we have an important point here, which is called the tyrion. The tyrion is the area of meeting of four important sutures, okay? Our four important bones. This is the area of meeting of parietal bone, and frontal bone here, and greater wing of the sphenoid bone, and the squamous part of the temporal bone. This is the area of called tyrion. It is the weakest point of the skull. Very important because it's a common site of extradural hematoma. If you go behind, we can see this is a mastoid bone. This is a styloid process. This is a tympanic part of the temporal bone. And this is the external acoustic meatus. And from behind, we have the external occipital protuberance with the uh, imaginary line. Should take a line here, the knuckle line, which is an important site of insertion of a lot of muscles, including the neck muscles. If we look to the inferior view, we can, have, we can see an important, if you imagine a line here, horizontal line with this pain, you can see that we have four important foramina in this line. Foramen ovae, behind it foramen spinosum. We have here foramen lacerum, foramen lacerum, and foramen ovale again. So ovale, lacerum, lacerum, ovale. And behind ovale, usually always remember spinosum. If you go behind the spinosum, you can see the carotid canal, and here the jugular foramen. This is a styloid process. This is a mastoid process. And in between them is a style mastoid foramen, which is the origin of the facial nerve. These are the occipital condyles, which form a ball and socket joint with the atlanta axial joint. And this is a big foramen, the, most, the biggest one, which is a foramen magnum. A lot of structure, they pass through this foramen. These are the posterior quani, or the posterior nasal apertures. This is the 
palate, the palatal bone formed by the, or we call it the heart palate. It is formed by the palatine bone from behind and the maxillary bone or the maxilla anterior. This is the incisive foramen where the nasopalatine nerve get out and the greater palatine artery are sent up to the nose. So these are the important things that you should remember when you look to the inferior view. Now, if we look to the interior of the cranium, we can see the cranial fossae. We have the anterior cranial fossa, the middle cranial fossa, and the posterior. The anterior cranial fossa, we have the crista galli here, the cripiform plate of the smoid bone, the site of the olfactory nerve fibers. And we have here the dorsum cilli and the tuberculum cilli, and in between them, the cella tertica, or the pituitary fossa. These are the optic canals, and this is the lesser wing of the sphenoid bone. This is the orbital plate of the frontal bone. In the middle crane fossa, we can see the pituitary fossa in the middle, in the body of the butterfly shape, and we have the wings. As we said, this is the lesser wing of the swimming bone, and this is the petrous part of the temporal bone. Here we can see our four foramen again, foramen oval, foramen lacerum, lacerum, oval, and behind oval, as we said, we have spinosum. And if you look here, you tilt the skull, you can see foramen rotundum. And here we have uh, the big foramen, foramen magnum, and above magnum, you can see the jugular foramen. And above the jugular foramen, you can see the internal acoustic meatus. This is the surface for the cerebellar hemispheres, and this is the posterior surface for the cerebrum. And here we can see many impression of many sinus, also venous sinus. We can see the transverse sinus impression here, the sigmoid sinus impression here. We have the sphenoparietal sinus here, and the origin of the superior segmental sinus usually starts here. And this area, this point, is the confluence of sinuses point in the internal occipital. Uh, equivalent to the external occipital protuberance, okay? So these are the important points that we have to remember in all of the skull. Thank you.